Chris Jordan produced another fine spell of quick bowling on the opening day of the LV County Championship match with Nottinghamshire at the brightonandhovejobs.com ground. But even his efforts were outshone by a brilliant 150 for the visitors' Samit Patel. Put in by Ed Joyce on a greenish pitch, Notts got off to a bad start as Alex Hales was bowled by a ball which didn't get up too much. Jordan had his first of his five wickets with his third delivery. His performances with the ball this summer and those from Steve McGoffin are one of the reasons why Sussex started this match at the summit of the championship table. McGoffin now had Michael Lum held by Jordan, who's also a mighty fine slip fielder. That left the visitors in a bit of trouble on 22 for two and they looked to Ed Cowan to make a really telling contribution for them for the first time this summer. That need became even stronger when Jordan had James Taylor taken behind on 11 before Cowan made it three for the all-rounder with an LBW decision as the Australian opener departed for 27 at 53 for four. Jordan is having a brilliant season in all aspects of the game and he was close to a fourth wicket in the morning session which had been completely dominated by the home side. And that domination appeared as if it was going to last into the afternoon after Stephen Mullaney walked into a drive off McGoffin and Nick to Ben Brown. Nottinghamshire was struggling on 72 for five and a small first innings total looked on the cards against a side who won their last championship match in just four and a half sessions in Horsham. Chris Reid was now given a going over by the very impressive Jordan who could do no wrong since his winter move from Surrey. Three times in three balls he beat the bat of Reid. The batsman sometimes left in two minds whether to play or leave. Jordan finally got his man in his next over, Reed this time having a nibble and edging behind on 18 to give Jordan figures of 4 for 32 from 13 troublesome overs. Jordan's figures were ruined a little later on by both Patel and Paul Franks who'd come together with their sides still in the woods on 112 for 6 in the 43rd over. But this pair batted superbly to stop the rot. The Sussex attack is currently filled with confidence and rightly so so it took some effort from Patel and Franks to just begin to get their side back into this contest at a ground where it's never that easy to dilute the potency of the fast bowler. Patel hit an amazing innings against one of the universities last month, but this was his best championship knock for a while and indeed one of the best of his career. His first 50 arrived with his seventh four from his 77th delivery and all of this while all around him was struggling. Put simply, Patel was in the groove right from the start of his inspirational innings. His timing in particular was exemplary as he struck an abundance of boundaries in the afternoon session which had started to turn this game around in Nottinghamshire's favour. This is a very important game for them. Patel was in danger of being left high and dry earlier on and so had to be very thankful for the efforts of Franks who was impressed since returning to the first team. He was comprehensively bowled by James Anyon, but only after he'd made a very valuable 36 runs in nearly an hour and a half at the crease. In that time, he'd shared in a 92-run seventh wicket partnership with Patel, who was by now nearing a brilliant 100, his first in the championship this year. This six took him on to 97. A next ball he drove, yes, you'll have to believe me, Monty Panasar for his 11th four to take him to three figures off 146 balls in three hours and 19 minutes. A leap showed just how pleased he was with this innings, a thrilling example of batting at its very best. Without him, his side would have been left in a bit of a mess, yet now they were in danger of getting a decent first innings total. And Patel didn't stop there either. He knew that his job was not done yet, and having been left out of England's ODI squad, he was producing his best at a very opportune moment. Rarely has he hit the ball so hard and so cleanly as he was doing here. He began to dominate another important partnership with Ajmal Shazad, another who played his role perfectly. McGoffin is not often treated with such disdain as Patel now raced to his 150, his third one coming off only 41 deliveries. His boundary tally was now up to 17 fours and one six. As I mentioned, just like Franks before him, Shazad batted in a fine fashion, supporting the run-hungry Patel superbly. In his time at Yorkshire, he showed that he can bat. His highest ever score of 88 was made at this very ground for Yorkshire four summers ago, so he obviously likes to perform beside the seaside. 
He added 114 with Patel in 28 overs, the latter's brilliant day being upset just a little as he was out in the penultimate over, trying to work Jordan to leg but being caught towards third man by Joyce. Patel was out for a scintillating 157 made from only 199 balls and thanks to him, Nottingham should just about shaded the first day by making 321 for 8, even though Jordan ended with figures of 5 for 83, his third five-wicket haul of the season. He has a chance to add to those wickets on the second morning, which will see Shazad resume his innings on 35.